Hi, I'm here at Bio Europe 2014 in Frankfurt. I'm speaking for um, Partnering 360, and I'm here with Christian Hordo. He's the development project team leader for Genentech. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. Now, Christian, tell me a little bit about your background. Sure. So my uh, my scientific training's in microbiology. Um, I did graduate research at the University of Toronto, and while I was there, I uh, I spent some time actually doing some entrepreneurial work on the side. I, I ran, I founded and ran an e-commerce uh, business. Just on the side. Just on the side in my in my, in my spare time, oh. and it actually so it got to the point where I had to make a, a career decision, and what I wanted to do was pull the elements of both the research and the entrepreneurship, the elements that were most uh, appealing to me, into a single role. And on the research side, I really enjoyed the intrinsic motivation of what I was doing. I was working in a children's hospital on brain tumor research. And on the entrepreneurial side, I really enjoyed the fast-paced, dynamic aspects of the business world. Um, and so I went to Harvard to get my MBA in order to transition over to the business side of the life sciences. Um, and so I've spent the better part of the last four years in the partnering group at Genentech. Um, and it really has been a wonderful mix um, operating at that intersection of, of business and science. Um, and what's, what's really great about the partnering role is that I get to go globally to conferences such as BioEurope here in Frankfurt to find the world's most exciting science, bring that to Genentech, um, and ultimately do that uh, with the goal of developing therapies that will one day benefit patients. Well, that's uh, a, a good goal. <laughs> now, I'm curious to learn more about Genentech's partnering um, business development strategy. And I see that the majority of your deals are in the preclinical stage collaboration. Um, can you tell me a little bit more? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I think in order to uh, appreciate the way that Genentech approaches partnering, it's, it's worth taking a step back to understand Genentech and its history as a company. And that goes all the way back to Herb Boyer and his really seminal work on protein expression that not only launched Genentech, but the entire biotechnology yeah. industry, really. Um, and Herb really, from the start, instilled a sense of having scientifically driven decision making at Genentech. Um, and, that's, and that's permeated throughout our history and really colors the way that we approach partnering. Um, and, and to that end, I think it really leads to sort of three key strategic elements to the way we think about partnering. And those are, one, that we partner early, as you mentioned. Secondly, that we pursue first-in-class and best-in-class opportunities. And third, that we really uh, look to be flexible in terms of our deal structure when we do meet that scientific bar. So in terms of the, the early partnership aspect, uh, we found historically that by going in at a very early stage, and 90% of our partnerships are preclinical, by going in at that early stage, we can bring to the bear the best of both organizations. Um, and so what we look to do is form research collaborations in particular where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And a great example of that is uh, a partnership we put in place a few years ago with a company called Xenon Pharmaceuticals out of uh, Canada. Um, and this was a pain partnership. And they brought to the table a great deal of expertise in terms of bio biology um, and ion channel expertise. And on our end, we brought a lot of capabilities with small molecules. And we combined those together to, in basically two and a half years, to bring a drug from the earliest points of inception all the way to clinical trials, which started earlier this year. So we've, we've, pretty we've, we've found really great benefit from, from partnering at that early stage. Um, and so the second piece of it is the first in class and best in class opportunities. There, because we are so scientifically driven, we're really looking for that cutting edge science. We're not looking for sort of incremental gains. Um, and so in the case of, of, of Xenon, it was with a target NAV17, um, which has some really exquisite bio biological validation, where essentially what Xenon did is they went globally to find individuals who had insensitivity to pain. So there were these people who were literally walking on fire in Pakistan uh, because they couldn't feel any pain. And Xenon did genetic analyses on these people and found out that it was NAV17 that was underlying that inability to feel pain, and that's what led them to start a drug development program on it. Wow. And so it's, it's cutting edge science like that that we're really excited and looking for. Um, and so the third element then is the flexibility in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the partnership structure. And that's the great thing about working in a scientifically driven organization, is that when we find something that meets that really high scientific bar, on the business side, we can be flexible to put in place deal structures that work for our partners. Um, and most recently, I think, uh, the New Link Genetics deal is a fantastic example of that. Although that wasn't an early stage collaboration, it's, you know, there's a clinical stage asset, 
because of the quality of the science that we saw there, um, we, we put in place a deal structure, including the economics, that really worked for our partner. Oh, wow. So I like, like to hear the origins of some of these uh, discoveries. Um, now, you led the negotiations for the New Link co collaboration, correct? Yes. Um, can you tell me how the deal came about and um, what it was about New Link's molecule, the NLG919, that was so important to Genentech? Sure. So, you know, first, I led the negotiations, but a, a deal of that complexity uh, requires a huge team effort on both the Genentech and New Link sides. Um, it was really a Herculean effort to get this done. And, and what got us really excited, I think, it, again, it goes back to the science. Um, there's, for, for a while now, there's been a compelling story around ideobiology and its role um, in immunity. For example, in um, maternal fetal tolerance, it's been shown that IDEO is upregulated so the maternal system doesn't attack the fetus. And that's sort of a natural endogenous mechanism to, uh, to, to, protect, to protect the fetus. And, and what's, there's been an increasing realization that tumors are hijacking that system to essentially prevent the immune system from attacking the tumor. So IDEO is also upregulated in tumors. And this has been known for some time, but only recently was it shown, in fact at ASCO this year, that there was clinical data with Insight's IDEO inhibitor combined with another checkpoint inhibitor, ipilimumab, which for the first time showed that there was potential clinical activity in the oncology setting with IDEO. Um, and so this was really exciting for us. Um, and the general belief with the science of IDEO is that it's likely going to be hold its most promising combination with other immune regulators. And so there was a compelling scientific story emerging. And at the same time, there was some strong strategic drivers per, for pursuing this partnership. Um, because of this combination potential, having an IDEO program that Genentech controls gives us the opportunity to both complement and differentiate uh, our cancer immunotherapy portfolio as a whole. So we had these drivers, um, and as I talked about, our partnering group's role is really to go globally and find the best science and the best quality opportunities. And to New Link's credit, um, they have been working in the cancer immunotherapy space, and in fact on the IDEO pathway for over a decade. Um, and so we began discussions in earnest with them earlier this year, flew a team out to Ames, Iowa to do an on-site visit, and, and developed, started to develop a really strong scientific rapport with them. And as we dug deeper into the diligence, we became increasingly impressed with the quality of NLG919, um, as well as the broader potential that we saw in that partnership for synergy between what they brought to the table um, and what we had. Um, and, and it was, to be, to be candid, a very competitive uh, deal negotiations. Uh, the cancer immunotherapy space is uh, highly competitive. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of interest in it. And I think what really helped uh, differentiate our proposal and the reason why I think New Link ultimately chose to work with us was because we have that scientific orientation that I talked about. And also I think that they recognized the potential synergy with our broader uh, cancer immunotherapy portfolio as well. Yeah, um, I see that Genentech and Roche have over 20 um, cancer immunotherapy molecules um, in various stages of development. Now, why is this platform so important to Genentech and ulti ultimately for patients? Right. So, Genentech historically has really been on the cutting edge of oncology research. We were pioneers in terms of thinking about molecularly defined treatments with diagnostics such as Herceptin, pioneers in armed antibodies such as Catsila, and I think we really do look at cancer immunotherapy as the next logical area that we can pioneer and hopefully advance medicines uh, for the benefit of patients. Uh, you know, cancer immunotherapy, there's really some um, innate appeal to that approach. I mean, if you think about it, the immune system is the most exquisite weapon that we have to fight disease. Um, and so it's long been thought that there's this, there's this potential there if you could therapeutically intervene to help spur the immune system. Um, and what's really exciting is the clinical data that has emerged over the past few years that has for the first time shown that there's actually, you know, clinical clinically meaningful benefits that we're seeing. And to be candid, we're likely just on the tip of the iceberg with what we're seeing. Um, I think that the, the early data are impressive, but there's also, I think, a growing appreciation that, that it is going to be complex and it's not going to be easy. Um, and I think that ultimately the approach that will lead to the greatest benefit in this space is by one, understanding fundamental biology, two, looking at rational drug combinations, 
and three diagnostically defining patient populations for treatment. And part of the reason why I think Genentech is so excited about this is because we are leaders in all three of those spaces. And so we think we have a lot to bring to bear to a field that just has a wealth of potential. Um, and at the end of the day, ultimately, this is a wonderful thing because it's gonna mean, um, hopefully, really meaningful change for patients. Wow, that's impressive and very, very exciting for a lot of people and patients especially. Exciting field, thanks for joining us today and um, I hope you have a great conference. Thank you very much. Sure.